So we will cover the lecture four this week. So far, what we have covered in the lecture four, we started with the basic definitions of process. What is a process? What are the elements of process? We have studied the trace and the dispatcher. We have understood that how these both work in a computer's memory architecture, how we keep track of all the instructions that are already being executed and the instruction that are to be executed. We have seen that dispatcher helps us to switch from one program to another program. Okay. And then we have went to the creation of process. So how a process is created, what is a parent process, what is a child process. And then we have seen that how the resource sharing execution and the address space are being shared and been executed. So in short, in the resource sharing, sometimes whenever a parent process, okay, creates a child process, they share the, all the resources. Sometimes they actually don't share any resources and sometimes they share subset of parents resources. One example was that, that if suppose the parent have 100 taka, in the first case, parent and child will use the same bank account. So in that, that means the child can actually take any money from that 100 taka and this parent can also take any money from that 100 taka. Then if the second case, child, children and uh, share subset of parent resources. What does this mean? That out of that 100 taka, the parent will make another account for 10 taka. Okay, and that chil ch children can actually use any amount of money from that 10 taka. So this is a subset of parent resources. The subset can be 10 taka, 50 taka, 25 taka, depends on the parent, okay? And then the third case, parent and child share no resources. Parent have their own 100 taka and child have to their own amount of money or resources. Then we have this execution. Parent and children execute concurrently. Okay, they execute on their own. There is no relationship. Or another one is parent waits until children terminates that means what the parent have to do okay it has to actually wait for his children to finish then we have this address space normally child duplicates the parents address space but some cases child has a different address space loaded into it so these were different part of the process creation and then we have seen what are the reasons for process creation. So these are some of the reasons that a new process is being created. In short, whenever the operating system needs to do something, okay, it, it creates another process. So whenever it does to do something new or provide any service, it creates a process. Then we have seen what is a process termination. That means when we actually uh, exit or when we terminate a process, uh, process and these are some of the reasons of process termination as you can see there are many reasons for which a process can be terminated a process can be terminated because it is done or it is actually the exceeded the time limit it has where there is no memory available okay there is some protection error or there is some bound violation that means it was trying to access memory or resources that it doesn't have permission to and then it has there might be input output failure Okay, there might be data misuse, there might be previous instructions, parent termination and parent request. So these two are actually very common that the, when a parent actually terminates, it also terminates all the res, uh, child processes and a parent sometimes may request to actually terminate a child process. So these are a few of the reasons of process termination for both. And then we have uh, seen that different models, two-state model and then five-state model. What are these models? So in a two-state model, basically these are actually uh, how we define the process. So whenever we actually run a program, we know we call it process. So these process are actually executed in our CPU. But problem is that whenever we actually try to execute anything in our CPU, okay, normal cases we cannot execute more than one program at a time so the cpu we have can actually execute one program or instructions of one process at a time so what happens if there are multiple processes running in my computer if there are multiple process running in my computer so those processes either have to pause okay or maybe it's 
there can be uh, sent back to the CPU so that one process can execute at a time. So here is an example that how we actually maintain all this. First, there was a two state model. The two state model was first used to handle these processes. Then the, we have seen that two state model was not enough. There was a lot of error in the two state model and it has a lot of limitations as well. So to solve that, we actually introduced the five state model. Okay, using the five state model, it is a little bit easier to actually arrange all the processes and their different states. So in the two state model, we had only two states. That means a process it was either running or it was not running. So what this running means, running means the CPU, that is the processor, okay, is actually executing, is exec executing that, <clears throat> is executing that process. So if you are right now in your computer, you're actually executing Zoom. Okay, in that way, the Zoom app is actually running in your computer and other apps, okay, those who are, might be running, they might be in the pause state. Okay, or maybe there's an interrupt when all the other apps are in pause. Then we have uh, a disp uh, <coughs> we have a uh, some problems in this model okay that that was actually forced us to find a new model so we have actually used the five state model then so in the five state model as you can see we have a new state that when the process is created then there's a ready state and then there's a running state terminatory state and waiting state so terminate means it is actually done new means it is being created our main operation happens in this three ready running and waiting so what does ready mean Ready means the process, the process actually have been allocated. It's the resources it needs. It's ready to go. Okay, all it needs is CPU time, but CPU is being occupied by some other processes. Let's assume that uh, you have some questions after the class and we have to, to 50 students. So 10 people want to ask some questions and then what will happen that you're actually just to wait for your time because I cannot actually answer 10 questions at a time. So I will listen to one question, then then go to the next one and so on. So ready state means you are ready for with, you have the uh, resources, okay, to execute the program and everything. You have the IO devices, just the CPU actually busy with, busy with another program. Second one is called running. So running as we can see, yes, running means the CPU is executing that program. Now from the running state, there are two things that can happen that was not possible to un, uh, how to differentiate in two state model. So in from the running state, sometimes it might happen, there will be an interrupt, okay, that map and a more priority based process can come or it might happen that the process that you're executing needs an input or an input output device to use. Okay, so there are three things that can happen. First of all, can, it can be interrupt. That means the pro program was running and suddenly there was a more important task that came on. Third, second one is IO devices. So that means you need some new input or new some uh, output device. So, or case three, it can, it can be waiting for an event. So basically it, can, it might be waiting for an event to occur. Okay, so in these three cases from the running, from the running state, we either go to ready or we, we go to waiting. So when we go to ready, so when an interrupt occurs, that means a task was doing very fine on its own, and then suddenly there was an interrupt. So it goes back to the ready state. But if the task was actually paused by itself because it needs something, okay, in the ready state, it doesn't need anything else. It just needs the CPU, okay. And then in the waiting state, it is actually waiting for IO or event wait. So for the IO or event when it occurs, it goes back to the ready state. That means the IO and event is done. We are actually ready to execute. So as you can see here, some uh, some people actually make the mistake. You actually may give an arrow here. Okay, that when the IO or event occurs, we actually go from waiting to running. No, it doesn't happen like this. When the IO is re ready or the event is wait is done, it first goes to ready state with all other processes. And then it stands in a line for the ready queue. And finally, we have the terminated state. So whenever a process is being done or terminated, okay, we actually terminate the process. So
So this is same for all other processes as well. Now in the five state, uh, this is the basic diagram that you can see from new to admit, ready to dispatch and ready to timeout. So and if it is an IO device or <coughs> event, we go for event weight. So this is the basic explanation that I have actually given. So this one was actually uh, better than the two state model, but there was some problems in this one as well. The problem was very simple and hardware dependent. So let's assume that you have a computer uh, which have a uh, main memory of, let's assume eight GB, okay, eight gigabyte. Now what happened that whenever you're running your computer, okay, you're actually using some heavy software. Let's assume you're using MATLAB or you're using Unity or some photo editing or video editing software. So you're using some heavy softwares, okay. And those softwares are actually taking all the memory. So let's assume that process A, process B, process C, and process D. So these four softwares is, or I can say these four processes taking all the memory of your computer. Now, all of these processes are in different state. Let's assume this one is a running state. This one is actually in the waiting state. This one in the ready state. And this maybe this one is also in the waiting state. So all these processes are being in different state. Only the A is actually running and rest of it are actually waiting for different states. Now, what can happen then there another new program can come. Okay, it might or maybe another new interrupt might come. So suddenly a new information might appear and you need to actually run that program. Let's assume there's a high priority program and the name of the program is E. Now E is actually needs to be executed, but as you can see, okay, the whole RAM, the second, uh, your main memory is full. Okay, so in that case, what I can do, all the resources are allocated to different processes. And this was a problem in the five state model. What can I do? This question was not answered. Can okay, that from that where we have this suspended process and the seven state model. So what is the seven state model? It introduces to new state. First of all, the everything is same as is the last one. If you see the diagram, you see all these states are actually same as the <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So all this five state are same. There's no other changes, but this two new state is being introduced. One is called ready suspend. Another is called block to suspend. So let's go back here. So what does ready suspend and block suspend means? First of all, the word suspend, S U S P E N D suspend. This was actually introduced to actually uh, whenever uh, let's in a school college, if you actually do any uh, how do any uh, like if you have any complaint against you what we do sometimes you're suspended from the school that means you cannot actually go to the school okay maybe you're suspended for one month or some specific amount of time and you cannot go to the school around that time so the concept of suspended process came from that as well so what happens that e is a process that actually needs to be executed and all these software uh, processes are actually taking the whole memory of the RAM. So what we will do in this case, we will actually, instead of waiting E, what we will do, we'll out of all these four, we'll actually take one of this process. Let's assume we will take C. So what we will do, we'll actually take one of this and from one of this, let's assume we'll take C. So E will take place of C and C will send back to the main memory, uh, sorry, the secondary memory, that is the local address. So the C will be taken by, E will be take the space of C. So for this one will be changed from C ready to E ready. Let me just erase this one to E ready. And then what will happen that E will be executed Okay, 
or it will be actually allocated resources. When E is done, it will actually C will actually come back here. So the process or the steps of taking C from this main memory suddenly to a hard disk storage is actually called suspension. Okay, so that means the process C was suspended. And if a process is suspended from the ready state, we call it ready suspend. If the process is suspended from a waiting state, we call that blocked suspend. So there are two ways you can get suspended. You were in the ready state. That means you had everything ready. You had all the resources. Okay. And then suddenly the computer needed, the operating system needed more memory. So what the operating system decides to send you back to the secondary storage. So that is, <coughs> So that is the call suspension. And if you are in the waiting state, that means you are waiting for an input or IO device or blocked or event to occur and you get suspended. Okay, let's assume that here we have same way we have uh, B and that B gets suspended and sent back to here. <clears throat> it will be blocked suspend. So there are two types of suspend. Let me go back to the slide. So there are two types of suspend. We have blocked suspend, we have ready suspend. So when ready suspend happens, that if, if you're in the ready state and suddenly the operating system needs more memory, it will send you back or suspend you and you will be stored into the secondary storage. That is called ready suspend. Secondly, if you are actually waiting for an event to occur or then you're in the blocked state and suddenly uh, the from the blocks, the computer needs some memory. It will send you back to the secondary memory. There is a hard disk or it will suspend you. Now here, there is one more thing that can happen. Okay. So suddenly, suppose you are actually waiting for a printer to be free. And that's why you are actually in the block state. So when you were suspended, you were suspended. What happened? The printer became free. In that case, this process, block process can actually transfer to the ready suspend. So sometimes we can transfer from blocked suspended to the ready su suspended. And the rest of the steps are all same. So in short, in the five state model, there was actually some problems, uh, there are some difficulties. One of them was that if I have uh, 100 programs running, okay, it might happen. There's one week where uh, yeah, the whole memory is taken. So then suddenly a new process come, I don't even have the memory to support that process. So what I do out of all the process that are not running, okay, I might see the least important one. So just take one process and then send it back to the hard, hard disk and, and use the resources, the memory to complete the task. And finally, these are the why we actually do this. So just have a read. This is the explanation that I give. Now the question is that what is actually a suspension? So here in this case, the seven state model suspension is basically the removal of head. So you are in the main memory waiting for or in the waiting for an event to occur or IO device or to get CPU time. And then the CPU needed some memory. So it actually sent it back. Now, what you need to, uh, oh, okay. There is one thing left that we, what are the reasons for process suspension? So as you can see from the first reason, swapping. Swapping means that we knew we're out of memory. Second, then we have some basic other definitions. Always reason, interactive user in, uh, request, timing, and parent process request. So this is actually a difficult parent process request, timing, and so on. But these are some of the reasons the process actually gets suspended. 